Um, you know, first it's 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 a fun week. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a bowl game um, type thing. I was out of conference. It, it really doesn't mean anything um, to them nor us as far as conference is concerned and going to the playoffs and them going to the SWAC championship and then to, um, you know, the other championship game that they play in. So, uh, but it's fun to be able to get mid season and get a game like this um, that everybody is um, tuning into and, you know, seeing, seeing what both teams have to offer. So um, it's, it's also great to play another top 10 team um, in the country. So it gives us an opportunity again, to get ready for the playoffs and uh, what it's going to be like going on the road um, in the playoffs against a great team and, um, you know, some more practice in that in that arena. I got to say, the one fist raised dance in the middle of the group is uh, fitting. Quite, quite <laughs> nice, there, Coach. I'll ask you where you got that from off camera, but uh, you got, I mean, you hit the check both boxes on Player of the Week this week as well. How nice is it to see the conference acknowledging all the hard work that's going in, not just offensively, but defensively as well, because you guys are getting it done. Well, um, you know, we're getting better every week. And, and I think that's really what you strive to do is, is to get better, Chris. And, and uh, it's, you know, Hodge, Malik Williams had a great first half. And, uh, you know, Brevin Allen had a great first half. We knew going into the game that if we were to take care of our business in the first half, we was playing for, our, our brothers who don't get an opportunity to play much, but I didn't want to put them in, in, in the fourth quarter. I wanted to put them in, um, in the third quarter when the game is still going and they still got their guys. And, um, and so they took care of business in the first half, um, and one player of the week with, with one half of work. And so, um, that's always great to, to see, um, that our guys continue to, um, develop and get better throughout the year. And uh, transition to this week, if we could here, um, I'm not saying that Jackson's, I'm not saying that they don't have good players. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. Obviously they got good recruits. Uh, I mean, they got big name guys, but there's only been one team. I mean, you know, game up in Tennessee, they played that they were even close in. I mean, it, I'm not trying to knock the power of a league or anything like that, but is it a case of the numbers maybe looking bigger and better than what they really are? Because it doesn't look like anybody's really tested them the way that you really kind of should be tested, you know, at a conference. Well, um, you know, what I, what I would say, Chris, is they, you know, every, everything that they got, they, they deserve, man. They, them guys are, are really playing tough football um, and very aggressive on offense and defense. And, and I think, um, you know, when you have an offense that's tempo like ours, I, I understand it. You're going to put points on the board. You put pressure on the other offense, try to keep up. And then now you got to pressure defense and you coming after the quarterback. And, and, uh, and, and so teams haven't been able to play regular football with them because of they get behind. And, and now it's time to pin your ears back and, and, and let's go, let's go um, see who get to the quarterback first. And, and so they, they really remind me of, of, you know, not saying at this level. Okay. So let me preface that at this level, um, the 85 bears, man, they all at the line of scrimmage and they all come. Okay. And it's the 46 defense in 2022. That's, that's really what they doing. And, and, um, and they make no bones about it. They coming. And they're going to be man to man. And and um, and so you better block them up or your quarterback going to be on his back all night. And and so that's what we got to be able to do, man. We got to be able to to block these guys up and, and um, give Hodge some chances and some time to um, find his receivers. But but then you look at their DBs, man, they got, got DBs everywhere like we do. And and so it's going to be a, a, a great matchup for our offense. and. And then, of course, their their offense is is fast paced like ours. Uh, they they high tempo. Uh, they just throw the ball more than we do. Um, they more like you know seventy percent throwing it, thirty um, percent running the football, um, and and so they want to put the ball in the air. And um, you know why not, man? When you have 
uh, Heisman, um, you know, candidate that, that we trying to um, get to be um, a Heisman candidate as far as the FBS is concerned. So, um, you know, if you have somebody like that, hell, put the ball in his hand and let him go to work. If I could jump in here real quick, uh, can you just give me the backstory on how this game uh, came about uh, as far as I, I'm, I know you guys do your scheduling years in yeah. advance or whatever, but can you just give me the backstory of how this game uh, got onto the schedule at this point of the year, whenever it came, yeah. whenever it came about? Well, I told my AD uh, year one after the spring that they had, I said, man, um, try your best to get a game with Jackson. I, I just think it would be awesome. Uh, for Campbell to play them and um, really put FCS um, on the national stage. I, I think that would be fun. And um, so he reached out to their AD and they was talking and, and um, finally um, we, we um, came to some agreement as far as the ADs was concerned. And then, you know, me and, and uh, Prime got on the phone and, and, and uh, we, we talked about it and and uh, we was excited to, to to make it happen, and and I think it's even greater that that they picked us for homecoming because um, that, that gives us a chance to um, go into an environment like that. Uh, you know, a lot a lot of my guys are are from um, you know what HBCU football is all about. Um, so you you know you're from the North Carolina area, you're from the South Carolina area, you're from the um, Atlanta area and uh, Florida area. So all these guys, man, Virginia, they already know what it's all about, right? And and now they get a chance to go to one of the greatest um, homecoming crowds and environments. And now you add prime to that, then it just, you know, it's it's times 1000, okay? And 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 this is, man, I mean, come on. That, this is a, I, I believe, um, a opportunity of a lifetime for my, young guys to be able to, to, to experience this and um, be able to play in a game like this. And we're not HBCU. So that's the other thing, right? So, I mean, how many non HBCU teams get a chance to experience what we about to? Yeah. And, and that kind of transitions me into my next question. This is probably a better question for prime, but in the conversations that you've had with him, what is it that he admires about your program and what you're doing at Campbell and, and why he felt like you guys would be a worthy opponent to bring to their homecoming matchup? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, man. Um, other than the fact that, you know, it's a brotherhood, as you guys know, man, in the national football league, and we respect each other. And um, and I think when you look at, um, you know, him, man, it's the godfather of the DBs, man. I play DB and, um, you know, he's the godfather. So, I mean, this is where it's all at, man. And when you talk about Mount Rushmore, um, he's number one um, as far as defensive football players, right? So, I mean, man, come on. Uh, um, it, it, it's a, I think that it's just a respect thing more than anything else, right? Uh, he, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, he's been doing it for, you know, two or three years. And, and I think Prime is just really all about bringing light to the NFL, his, his fellow NFL alum. I think he's, you know, he's doing it with the HBCU. This is just who he is as a person. And, and I think a lot of people need to, you know, talk about, um, you know, the light that he's shining on a lot of things. I appreciate that, Coach. That's beautiful stuff. Yes, we'll all be watching, and good luck this Saturday. Thank you. How you doing, Coach? Um, I, I was in the Slack press conference yesterday and asked Prom about the importance of this matchup, not only on the field, but Campbell and Jackson State are two programs that are setting records on the recruiting trail at the FCS level. How important is it to for you guys to meet on the field and show that, all that talent could come to FCS and that there's another path that all this top four or five star talent does not have to just go to the FBS level. Well, um, you know, Zach, I think it really comes down to um, what, what are you doing with that talent? Um, because it's one thing to get it. It's another thing to, to, you know, produce it, groom it and get it ready to go to that next level. Cause that's really what it's all about. And, and um, can we get these guys, uh, to go to that next level and get drafted. Now we talking. Now we can say, okay, guys, 
the FBS is not the only avenue. You can come through the FCS. Um, you can come through programs like Campbell. You can come through programs like Jackson State and still get to where you want to get to and have fun doing it and then get developed by um, guys who live that life and know what it's really about. We didn't read about it. We lived it. And, um, you know, I did it for a decade. I think Prime did it for two decades. <laughs> uh, he did it for a long time. And, um, you know, so I, I think, Zach, that's really what it's all about, man. Develop these young men um, to be professionals so they can understand what it takes to get to that next level. And, um, you know, when we do that, then we can look back, Zach, and say, okay, this is a great thing for you guys to pick other avenues. And, and you mentioned it briefly. It's homecoming. They're expecting near a sellout, close to 60K this weekend down in the vet in Jackson. How are you guys preparing your team and players to deal with the crowd noise, the atmosphere, and just all the pageantry that comes with an HBCU homecoming in Jackson? Man, I, look, I've never been to one. So this, this is my first one that I get to see. Zach, so so I don't know um, when you talk about preparing them for, you know, 65,000, um, you know, black people up in the stadium. I don't know what that's like. Um, I've been in 100,000, but they weren't all black. And um, so we we getting a chance to to experience all that, man. I mean, I want to. I mean, you know, it, it's it's something that I've never seen either. So um the only way that I, I'm able to tell guys for anything in life is that you stay in the process. And the process is this. You chop wood and you carry water. You do the simple things in life. And you're doing them at a high level. And you repeat it over and over and over and over and over. And then you don't get caught up into what environment you're going um, to. You don't get caught up into who you playing. You don't get caught up into none of that. You just get caught up into the process and and then enjoy the, the, the moments, okay? Uh, and, and that's really, um, Zach, how we prepare for, for anything. You know, we played at ECU. Um, I can tell you this, they're not going to be no louder than ECU was or, or um, crazy. They were sold out, and them suckers was loud all game, okay? And um, so we've been in environments um, as far as the crowd um, is concerned and the number of people. Um, is concerned. Uh, we just never been to a HBCU homecoming, man. I've heard a lot about it. Um, and so now I get a chance to um, come witness one of the best. And, and I know Prime going to throw the right party. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to joining. And uh, a last quick follow-up. Uh, this is a huge game. You guys are receiving votes to the top 25. What would this mean for your program at Campbell to get a top 10 FCS win and and if you guys win this one, there's no debate. You guys are going to break into that top 25. What would that mean for you and your program? Well, it would be the first time in school history. So you, you're talking about historical event. Um, it's going into the top 25. And so, you know, that's what it means. It's just the first time that it would ever happen. And um, to me, what better way to test your football team than, than to play a top 10 uh, football team in the FCS um, arena? You know, I don't think they're going to be able to get in the playoffs because I, I believe that um, HBCUs do something different. Um, and so, you know, this is a chance for us, again, to test ourselves. So when we get to the playoffs, we'll know what it looks like. We'll know what it feels like. We'll know the talent level. And then uh, we'll be prepared um, when November come around and, and we see it in that playoff. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Yeah, coach, I just want to jump in here real quick. Um, you you talked about it and said, you know, it's definitely a fun matchup for you guys, but you know, it's a bowl game. It's not really pressure on either teams. And you know, what what would define success? I and mean, obviously everybody wants to win, but what would define success for your team this weekend? Um, you know, success is we play great football. That that's really what I ask every week. Um, guys, let's go be us. Let's go play great football. Let's we, we we're not gonna be anything else. Um, and let's show that we got better this week. That's success to me. Um, and so we, we got to play at a clip of 18 uh, miles per hour um, as a football team. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, our, that's our standard. 
that's how we play. We play fast. Um, I want to play physical uh, because that's what we do. And, uh, and, and you know, at the end of the day, we want to have a fast start um, um, because, again, that's who we are as a football team. So um, that's Darnell. When, when I look at it and I can say we did those things, then I'm going I'm to call it a success no matter what the um, scoreboard says. Appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Thank you.